Hey, what's going on, everyone? It is David Palmer, Leo King, and Rich Lop here for the Awakening Experience here already in February on Valentine's Day of 2024. What's going on, Rich? How are you doing today? Doing good, man. What's up with you? Did you have fun over there at the Conscious Life Expo? Yeah, I had a blast. I mean, it was a little, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of light work, but as you know, that place is heavy energetically. There's yeah. so many spiritual people and it's in the thick of downtown LA with the freaking, well, it's not technically downtown LA. It's at LAX, but still with all the air, it's like one of the busiest airports in the world. And there's so many frequencies. And then you add a bunch of spiritual people and a bunch of different gifts. And then you add just like the energy that's trying to come into that place to thwart it. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. I'm not- I can't believe I've been doing that for 10 years. <laughs> I don't know how many panic attacks I've had over 10 years there, but I've had a lot. It actually, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, it actually made me feel a little bit better to hear you say that. Cause I thought it was just me because I mean, we show up there and well, first of all, that parking garage was insane. And then when we finally make it in there, we get off the elevator. And as soon as I step out of the elevator into that place, I swear to God, the biggest anxiety attack hit me and that threw me. I didn't expect to feel that kind of energy. Like, because, you know, I'd never been to it before. I was expecting it to be something like Disclosure Fest. And yeah. in a way, I mean, aesthetically, it was similar to that. But the energy was nothing like Disclosure Fest. You know, you step into that big pyramid, the energy felt fucking amazing. I had an awesome time. And it, I didn't have a bad time at the the conscious life. It's just the energy felt it, thick. It, 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 I, I, I ain't going to lie. I didn't like it. It didn't feel good to me. <laughs> no, I, you know me i like how it's real i think you know what it is is there's so many it's just conscious life expo so there's there's all the stuff that is the light work stuff and then there's people there that do the alien stuff then there's a ton of people who channel aliens to right so there's all these energies that are being called upon there the good the unknown the you know so it, it kind of is a blend of like all of it which I, I think what, you know, what a lot of people, some people know, some people don't, but like, you know, Adrian and Jimmy Church who who do Disclosure, like when they went to the Luxor, they went and gridded that place for three days before the event, hmm. right? So like there's a little different vibe about that, if that makes sense. Like I, I really believe in like if you're going to do a big event, but I think it's a, a, a little bit more difficult in LA, you yeah. know, and when you're mixing a lot of different kind of things there. Plus, you know, I was in the lobby and there was like five homeless people that came in, like just, just trying to like, you know, they they don't let them sleep there in the lobby, of course. But it was like, they were talking all like, Oh, you should see all the weird reptilian people I deal with on the street. And I sleep in this corner and I was like listening to some of the stories. I was like, Oh man, like there's just around that area, you know, just so much weird shit going on. And I was like starting to think like, you know, I know that the homeless problem in LA is one of the worst in the world, but I'm like, that's kind of creepy to hear the homeless people saying that they're seeing entities on the street. So yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I would imagine a, a place like L.A., you know, that there's an energy in L.A. that's unlike any energy and not in a good way. Right. I, mean, I, I think, the, yeah, I mean, if you've been to any of the major cities like New York City or Miami, you know, Las Vegas, they all have a different vibe to them. And to this day, no vibe feels better than Vegas. I still that my heart still lives in Vegas. But, you know, going to L.A. for the first time, I remember uh, not really having any expectations, but just kind of expecting to feel kind of a, a high vibrational, uplifting, you know, vibration. Not at all. I first no, stepped no, no. foot in L.A., man. There's a evil, evil force in that place that I can't even describe in words. It just feels like a panic attack. Walking around LA, just a panic attack is the only way I can really describe it. But it's not like a normal panic attack. There's some some other kind of creepy, weird energy underneath of it that feels almost almost like AI. It doesn't even feel doesn't even feel like an organic anxiety attack. If that makes sense. No, dude. I mean, I I I literally lived in LA for many years and imagine feeling like that every day. Fuck that. No wonder you had and, panic attacks all the time. Uh, and, and, and exactly. And, and, and 
I wasn't on anything either. I was completely sober in my life and everything. And it was fucking like, no matter what I tried, no matter what spiritual techniques, that is a place that you can see why even in the spiritual community, people who are there kind of numb themselves out. I chose not to do that. Of course I ended up getting out. I was just like, I'm but it wasn't easy. The only place that I lived that actually was cool was in Marina del Rey on the water, on the ocean. And it was separate from a lot of that vibe and with the boats and shit. And I was like, Oh, okay, I could do that. But I had to be that far. Like I had to be on the water. Yeah. It was the only place that it would get, get it away. So, you know, but you know, it was cool. I always have fun there. It's got a lot of interesting people and did some cool lectures and, you know, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing the solar activation that we're going to be doing out in Texas. Like that yeah. to me is going to be more like, okay, we're bringing the light. And, and I don't think anybody's in that area has ever seen anything from what we're bringing. Probably not. You know, so Probably not. I know that, that, you know, I'm bringing something to that event that, that I've, I've done a, a lot of the high vibers have heard me talk about some of the things, but I really want to dig up. Well, I, I guess if, if some people in high vibe have li listened to, you know, things that I've talked about over a long, drawn out period of time and attended the paid events that I've done and stuff like that, they, they can probably put it together. But the majority of the public, like, you know, because what I'm bringing to the table is, you know, if you look at the spiritual community, one thing that's losing popularity is manifestation. That's losing popularity. It's starting to fall off. And I think they did it that way on purpose. They got everybody all hyped up about it misled people seriously yeah. so so many people jumped on it yeah yeah and then they started trying it and it didn't work and they would try this and it didn't work and then now what eight years later pe most people they hear that word manifestation and they just they roll their eyes you know like it's starting to lose popularity and it's because you know people aren't explaining it from that scientific perspective and they're not explaining what it's really about and why it's so important to learn it in these times and that's what i'm going to be breaking down at at the event like you know breaking down the science behind it the quantum physics your the neuroscience behind it and wrapping that all up and making it so that you can understand why it's so important to learn because you know, these fucking crazy times that are coming, you know, if people don't understand the way this matrix works, they might take the lower timeline. You know, we're heading into that age of Aquarius and whether you take the high timeline or the low timeline, then we're still going into the age of Aquarius. It's just the high timeline Aquarian energy is all about unity consciousness, the high timeline. The low timeline in the shadow of Aquarius is unity consciousness, but everybody is one cyborg. Right. Like you're one, you're, everybody's linked up to the fucking internet, you know? Which I think when we, so this show is definitely going to be going into like the weird fucking realities that are definitely probably more lower timeline, but also I'm sure we'll talk about the higher timeline, but especially with, you know, these Apple vision pro videos. And I, I feel weird that I, I'm an owner of one. <laughs> I was going to walk through and put a Trump hat on and walk through the, the conscious life expo and just do that as like a joke oh. because it would be like an oxymoron. Like people would freak out about the Trump hat or some people might freak out about the Apple vision pro just to freak people out <laughs> and just like, you know, but it's one of those weird things to where it's like, okay, I thought at first, like, there was the one guy who was caught in his Tesla driving with the automated shit and he had his Apple vision pro on and he's doing it. And it literally got the fucking government to be like, do not drive with these things on. Right. And then I thought like, okay, maybe that it was like more of a like couple people. But then as you and I were doing the AI, like just dolly, like making our shit, when we were like questioning, like, what would it be like in this dystopian world of like, you know, people like all connected to this virtual reality and then the neural link that Elon Musk is making. And then like, you know, I'd said, put it in like a jail cell and like that they don't know that they're in a jail cell, but like kind of, it's very matrix potty, but it was really weird that you even said this. I was like, what the fuck is that weird ass cyborg in the middle of all the people in the rows hooked up? And it was like a, AI cyborg that was connecting all the brains of all the people. Mm -hmm. And that, that was kind of a trip to me because I was like, you know, there's all these like AI robot stuff coming out that they're really trying to push. And it's almost like, 
are those going to be like, you want to connect, you want to buy, you want to go into the world, you got to go through, and then you got to be like nice to the AI cyborg to connect as it's kind of, and that's kind of the craziness of the matrix, the idea that the machines and the machines that are running the pods kind of would be like, and I don't know, we, we were then posting it on X and then all these, I put in the hashtag Apple Vision Pro and there was fucking people getting out of their cars and Teslas and walking around the fucking street like it's normal. Yeah. What do you think about all of that shit? <laughs> it scares the hell out of me, honestly. I mean, like I said, I'm kind of scared to own one of those things. Not that I don't think it would be cool. It looks fucking awesome, but it looks a little bit too cool. And right. I, know, I know me. I know that I'm the type of person I tend to do things in excess. And, you know, if I enjoy something, I can easily, like, I have an addictive personality. So I could easily end up liking it too much. And I think that I could, if I accidentally let my mind run off unattended, I could end up being one of those people that gets trapped in it, possibly. You know, so if you're, I, I would think, I'm going to wait, I'm going to hold off as long as I possibly can before I get something like that. Because uh, you, you have to, you have to go into something like that very consciously aware. You know, if you're very conscious and you're a skilled energy worker and you're in tune with yourself, Okay. Um, you know, you can navigate that yourself, but I want to make a hundred percent sure I'm like in touch with me before I get one of those things and decide to play with it. Cause I don't want to get fucking stuck in that thing. Like, Whoa, this is cool. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, I do. I, I, in 2017, I helped build one of the first VR apps. And so I had an HTC for my PC that you used to be able to have to go in and have actual like fucking sensors that you'd put in the room to, to track where you were. That's how long I've been in it as a developer. Then I've had two Oculuses and I am a developer for Oculus. And then now I'm a developer for Apple vision pro and I have an Apple vision pro. So this is my fourth set like thing, but maybe it's easy for me cause I'm a developer. So I know what the back end is. And how it works and how the spatial aspect of it works from the augmented reality to all that. And, and so for me, I'm like trying to make cool things to teach people that's not very dystopian, but to kind of understand the universe more and to understand consciousness more. And there's cool people that are doing that, but like a majority of the apps are more about keeping you in. But to get to a really weird point, when I first started on HTC on the Vive back in 2017 and I started to help develop this really cool app. It was really weird that, you know, people get dizzy when they get into it. I didn't get that dizzy, but then I ended up doing like eight hour sessions at a time in there, which still, I don't know many people that know how to do that. Still like my brother just got a quest recently and he was like, man, man, it made me dizzy. You know, me might me have a headache. And that's the number one complaint for most people, their first times. And it's one of those things to where, you know, it, 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 it did still though, for me have that moment, like six, seven years ago where I was like, holy shit, like I'm back to this reality. Like it really is when they mean reality, virtual yeah. reality, you're, we're going into another reality. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's you know? the, the part that creeps me out is, and I, I think we talked about this in another episode. Um, have you seen that, that they, they do this little experiment where they'll set you down at a table and have you put your arm on the table and put your other arm right here and they'll put this fake rubber arm <laughs> in front of you as if it's your arm and they'll tap your, tap your hand, tap your hand, tap your hand, tap your hand and then they'll take a hammer and smack the other hand and then your brain thinks that it hit your hand and you'll freak out and go, ah. So like the point that I'm making is your, your brain is connecting that fake hand to it as if it's your hand. It may sound kind of weird and out there, but with the technology they have nowadays, it would be nothing for them to be able to, to program one of those vision pros to where not only do you look around and see this whole reality around you, but you look down and you see an avatar. And I mean, they already have that. Okay, well, how long do you think it would take? And if they, if they can dial in the fucking graphics 
so realistically perfect to where it looks straight up like how long do you think it would take before your brain connects to that avatar your brain your body think about it your body reacts to what you're thinking about like how many times have you sat around and thought about something that pissed you off your heart starts thumping you start sweating you grit your teeth your body will react to what you're thinking about your body doesn't know the difference between what you're thinking about and what you're experiencing right so when you're in that reality and your brain your brain will actually if you spend enough time in there it'll connect to that fucking avatar next thing you know that's the matrix you fucking live in dude that's what freaks me out because it wouldn't be nothing they they could they could make that happen like that if they wanted to i mean they've already got it right to where in apple vision pro first thing you do when you set up is you turn the fucking your vision pro towards you and you take massive facial pictures of you to where then inside in their own augmented reality and their own virtual reality chip they actually then use the cameras inside to then know what your facial expressions are like the best part about apple vision pro technology wise is their eye like if i look to the left it'll like know i'm looking and click and if i want to it's got cameras then below on my fingers where i just go like this and we'll close the window i could just look right so like but if i do facetime so i facetime my mom with it and she was laughing and then i facetimed sophia with it and she was right next to me and she's like it's so creepy because it's you but i know it's not you like they've got it to where now it actually so what's it look like what's it look like on their end when you do that it's me but you can tell it's not me but it's my same facial expressions my tongue so you mean like on the phone it'll Uh show a a a a a, a, vis- a, a visual of me moving around doing the whole fucking nine yards my teeth my my eye my expressions but it seems almost like creepy right it is creepy what's what's really weird though is like when you get into Neuralink right now that's exactly what elon musk is doing he's tapping into that part of the brain right to where you just look at a phone and close it click the buttons without using your hand Mm -hmm. right or look at the keyboard and your mind is typing the keys and like that's where it gets really weird there was also just at the last wef just a month ago in the last month there's like this new pill that you take that has a microchip in it and it goes throughout your whole body to where everything is the biometrics of who you are are then able to through fingerprint facial or anything only be you so i know like the cbdc already is creepy enough the creepier part is what it looks like they want to do is to have you take a microchip pill that basically then confirms it's you which is even weirder to me or than if they do this Neuralink thing like i think you know I was on a radio show last night and like we were talking about how like the vaccine passports like that shit's so fucking fucked up and weird but imagine you know just to get on the internet just to get to wherever and they're like well unless you take this biometric so to me the CBDC itself isn't as scary as how it's used by the access to get to it yeah and that's really what's kind of dystopian to me is because let's say you're in your house and you're doing it and you're neurolinked up and you're in a augmented vr reality or apple vision pro is calling it spatial they're all coming up with their own names right and let's say they you're watching a movie or you're just doing something you could be so connected and lost with your brain that you wouldn't even know anymore that you're being picked up and put into some fucking weird pod and shoved out in the middle of the ocean and then where's the line of like where they could find a part in the brain that actually would make you think that you transitioned into that life that you're not going back to the other one that oh wait though maybe i was dreaming that i was that old person that put this thing on when really no this is my reality it wouldn't be hard at all you know like, no, i don't it, i don't think it would be hard at all i, th- I think they they 
have beyond the fucking technology to wipe your brain. They have the technology to take your consciousness. They they actually have a monkey. It's they they took a monkey's consciousness and put it in a computer. There's a fucking computer with the consciousness of a monkey and it's alive in that computer. Like no shit. The, the fucking technology they have, it would, it would be nothing for them to wipe your mind, stick a goddamn mask on your face, wipe your memories, and then this is, this is your new reality. And I seriously think, the more I think about it, I'm becoming more and more and more convinced that that's the lower timeline, that through some sort of VR mask, that's the lower timeline. I'm thinking so. I mean, I mean I, my dad used to scare me with this old monkey's paw story when I was a kid. And now I'm thinking of like, let's say how I just said and where you're going, they put people this, they put them someplace. They would have no idea if Hannibal Lecter came and wanted to have a yogurt souffle of your brain. Right? Like you wouldn't even know. They could just go, and just that movie Hannibal always got me when I think it was Ray Liotta sitting there and fucking Hannibal Lecter's above him. And I know some people are probably like, God, do not go there right now. But it's just like, <laughs> we have to talk about that because you wouldn't know. Yeah. Right. Like that. And, and the fact that you're even talking about a monkey's brain and consciousness, that also reminds me of Indiana Jones, like how they like have like, they were doing that with the monkey brains. And then, you know, well, like it, 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 it's getting to where Joe Rogan said it best about, like what the shot, right? Like how the people who got the shot were upset with anti-vaxxers because they thought that they were not evolving with Darwinism, right? Like, like you're not evolving with the technology. You're not evolving with the DNA that we are as humans. We're just advanced enough now to go to these new realms for health. But he said, you know, it's so weird if you go to the died suddenly page and it's just like, all the people who brag about, I got the shot. You know, that's the reason why those pages exist because so many people bragged about it. And then you just see their obituaries, 15 through 38 to 40 years old to 50 years old, just like within the last year and a half to two years or most of them, you know, it's always within two to three weeks of after they got the shot. You have know, you, have you seen the numbers? Yeah, it's crazy. The number the just the, the world population in 2019, we were up to almost 8 billion you know how many people are on the planet now? Six billion. Really? For real? Yeah. We've lost a billion people. Well, <laughs> it's fucked up, dude. This has been like beyond fucking genocide. It makes the Holocaust look like a goddamn walk through the park. Right. It's fucking insane. So. Well, so my whole point is like, <laughs> here we go. I feel that when you think of the evolution, Joe Rogan said it best. He's like, oh, but really what's funny is maybe Darwinism is that the evolved human that we're at now is the one that needs to be able to see through the deception and be like, I ain't taking that shit, right? Because if you think about survival, that's really what Darwinism is about is survival. Yeah. And so I can understand where maybe people who were vaccine, you know, proponents were like, oh no, this is about survival to survive ourselves from this pandemic bullshit when really that was not a threat at all. And I think that's, what's crazy is like, he's like, oh, like now you're not evolving because you were stupid enough. You, you know, like, it's kind of <laughs> like, it's kind of true though, you know, yeah. that there is an evolution happening right now at the same time while we're watching the old form of human that didn't want to evolve fall off. That's what, if, if we want to get kind of deep esoterically or even scientifically with Darwinism, with every new form of human from Cro-Magnon and, and farther up, as we evolve, the other species form of human dies off. And I feel like that's what we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. But then it's almost weird because, you know, we do come to lines of technology where it's like, okay, you know, horse and buggy or car, right? So there was a lot of people that were scared about the automobile 
or the internet or the credit card. This is definitely playing in a whole new world, especially the psychedelic aspect right now. Like that's what they're really now starting to push, right? Like it's ready. Like this is what I think is going to be 2024 is the year that psychedelics become pharmaceutical. Like, yeah, it's fine. Go out, go to your psychiatrist and, you know, have some psilocybin or magic mushroom ceremony or MDMA. But that opens up so many portals, mm -hmm. right? That, oh, yeah. You know, you could be taken over with, but then you mix that with the Neuralink or you mix that with oh, wow. these virtual realities. <laughs> That's where it could actually make people believe that they're not, that, that they were, they were in a false reality and that this is the real reality now. And that's where I'm wondering, because like even the, what tripped me out about Apple Vision Pro that I have is like the way they did the battery, they did it with a cord down to can like put it in your butt because they didn't want to have the weight. That's what they said. But it made me really think about, if you think of the matrix, if you remember how everybody's got their fucking holes for their inputs, like in their body, you know, in the back of their head, if you're pulled out of the pod. What's weird is Apple Vision Pro just came out with this whole, you know, you could hook it up to power down there, like off your butt or if you had it to the side, but also hook it up as a USB to actually put data and information on it. Hmm. Right. Whereas like all the others, they don't do that. You have to like plug it in up here and it's weird to have a USB cord up here. Like, you know, so then you don't use it that long. Cause it's like, why would I want to have it plugged in with like a USB right up here? I'm like moving around like, you know, but Apple Vision Pro kind of came up with already the whole idea. It kind of is kind of creepy, but kind of like cyborgish. It's like, oh no, you can plug me in right here. And I can take data right here. So it's the beginning of that like merging, I guess you could say. And then the other weird thing is like, let's say if I'm looking at you on Apple Vision Pro, they, they made it and they sold it as you'll be able to see my eyes. Like, you know, cause it's glass. No, that's not what they did. They sold that as the commercial. But what really it is, is LED lights that are eyeballs that are not my eyeballs, but it tracks my eyes. So when I look at Sophia in it, she's like, that's so creepy because I know they're not your eyes. Like it's, it's, they're fake eyes. So it's not like a clear screen. Correct. It's, it's not a clear screen. It's a fucking projected screen of eyes that they create. Man. This is, see right now, right now we're we're going to another nexus point timeline, <clears throat> kind of kind of sort of like twenty twenty, but where all the timelines are overlapping right now, right? So they're all on top of each other, and you know to really really actually see the people stepping onto the train that's going to take them down that lower timeline is fucking creepy, weird, dude. I mean, and. and, and Another thing, what we were looking at, the fucking sex dolls. Oh, my God. This, this is absolutely insane because, I mean, not only is that just another part of the depopulation agenda, but then I got to thinking. I got to think because, you know, you, you're thinking, you know, oh, man, just sell these realistic looking sex dolls for $10,000. Then, you know, but then I'm thinking, well, who is it that's actually buying those? No man that can get laid is going to go buy a fucking $10,000 sex doll. So, well, I mean, I, you and I, when I, I was like, we met, maybe we need to talk about the story. Cause last week I found out about these AI sex brothels that are popping up in Europe and how they're getting shut down because it's like, it's a brothel, but they're having them like do like, they're making them look like 15 year old girls. Yeah. And then they're like setting it up for like weird rape situations. Yeah. I didn't know when you and I look now they're popping up in America. They sure started showing Houston, Texas. Did it? I'm like, wait, what? And then the weirdest part is then there was an ad. It was, I forgot what it was called, Robo Girl or Robo something. We clicked it and you can pick out the fucking girl and change the face and it's already there. And it, we watched the commercial and it was the, I felt like I was in some fucking like weird thing like back when I was a kid, like, it, like in my teens on MTV watching like some ad for something in the future. But like it, this being like the most retarded, stupid thing, like the AI dolls are talking through the whole thing. Like you, we will be your bet. And they move their head. Like we will be and your moaning. lover and moaning and be like, <laughs> we feel what you feel. Ah, I'm like, <laughs> but 
<laughs> this is where the conversation I think can get really gnarly. You and I started to have it. I think it's the worst thing that could ever happen because I feel like it could desensitize people to actually the human emotion and feeling to where then they will just think of actual humans no longer as actual humans. They'll just think that the AI doll is no different than the human on the street and mistreat the way they mistreat their AI robot human. Yeah. They'll, they'll just look at a human and be like, Oh, I don't see the same. I don't see any more. There's a blur now. It's just like, well, I, you know, cause like, there's already the weirdos that already have a sex doll. Like that was like 10 years ago, the documentaries. And it's like, this is my wife. And it's so weird to like prop them up to like, we're reading and like, yeah. hi honey. And like, she's like holding the book, you know, and he's like reading off her hands. Like, I'm like, okay, that already was weird enough for me a long time ago. But now the fact that they've got like these, especially with chat GBT and, and all that shit. Now it's like th those things will have full conversations. If you want, there's like AI apps now for girlfriends. That was like mm -hmm. the last six months. I can't believe that they're at that state of, especially cause you know, $10,000 is a lot of money. I don't care how much money you have. That's a lot of money. And the fact that, you know, most people aren't going to want to spend that much money, but the fact that they, they're pop popping up sex brothels throughout the world at the same time, they talk about a world where we already have enough problems with people, uh, especially, I mean, that's why your network's so popular and the work that you do with love. And how many people want to keep, you know, is it my ex or should I, you know, is it the next Tinder date? Is it this? Okay. Now you add this to the equation and it just, what we've already seen in this disconnection with love and, and the problems with people in relationships goes to like a level. I don't even know if we can comprehend at this moment when you add that into the mix. Well, I mean, they're, they're, they're wanting to hijack human sexuality because I know I've mentioned this before, but the most powerful force in this corner of the universe is the human emotion and belief system. Humans' right. emotions and humans' beliefs are the the most powerful creative force in this corner of the universe. That's why they have these beings who enslaved every last one of us to create this reality for them. Now, now what fuels the human emotion and belief systems? Their sex drive. That's what that's what fuels it. That is that that is like the fucking it's like that's the transmission. That's the engine that drives it all. You know, every little decision you think about it, think about your average human making their way through life on a daily basis. Every single decision that your average human makes all boils down to one thing. Finding a mate. Right. The majority of the things we, the majority, when you see dudes that go out and buy cars, they're not buying the car because they want the car. They're buying the car because they wonder if they'll attract a mate. I want to look attractive. I want, uh, it's all about perception. The clothes that we wear, what we're thinking subconsciously is, do I look sexually appealing? Right. You know, every little decision that we make. So they're trying to hijack that. They're trying to hijack it and take control of it. And, you know, what a better way to do it. But, but back to what you were saying about how it could desensitize, like, people to, you know, think, well, you know, that's not good enough anymore. I want, you know, a regular human. I wonder if, because I, 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 I do worry about that. But also think about this. Think about 15, 20 years ago with the violent video games. And everybody yeah. was really, really worried that it would turn people into violent people. And some people it absolutely did. Yeah. But some people it didn't. So I wonder if, like, in a way, like, for me, for example, I was obsessed with Grand Theft Auto. Oh, right. I loved just living in that little fucking Grand Theft Auto matrix, dude. I would fucking live in that matrix for 12 to 15 hours a day, obsessively. And then after a while, I just kind of got bored with it. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. I pretty much lived out that fantasy. I'm good. So I'm wondering if maybe there's some people out there that would kind of become disillusioned by it. You know, mm. I wonder, I don't know. It's so slippery. I think it could probably go one way or the other, depending on the individual. You need a light? Yeah. I mean, I think you're right. I, I feel that I really do think that it doesn't affect some people. Like I, I play call of duty, right? I don't play it every day. I don't play it every week, but when I play, like I'll get into it for a couple hours and I can, but I don't know. I was also in the military. So like, I know that 
you know, life is not as easy as just run into every new, you know, multiplayer situation or even Call of Duty Warfare with your buddies and like get shot and killed and then just get to do it again. Right. Like, 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 but, but there's people who don't, that, that might be being that, that might be the deeper subconscious, right. Is like, Oh, I'm invincible. And then with all the weird shit with the wars right now, throw them out there and then think the same thing. Right. Like it might be that, that might be the deeper subconscious implant that's been going on with the video game shit. Cause if you think of grand theft auto, it's kind of like, look what happened with the BLM riots and shit. If, if anything, the, the, I remember looking at the BLM riots and being like, this shit's Grand Theft Auto. Like when those dudes were walking around with lead pipes in LA, fucking beating an old woman's fucking head and then bashing the fucking store fucking open. I'm like, that's fucking Grand Theft Auto. And then jacking the cars and fucking the police cars and shit. It was just like, holy shit. That's Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto. But now I'm like, okay, now there's that other aspect of the modern warfare thing where that's the number one game, right? That's the number one game. What's the implant about that? It's like invincibility that I'm the best. And you know, let's be real, like probably because we know the stats, right? You know, over like 67% of Americans are overweight or have health problems like that, right? So you got all these young guys doing it. I mean, like what happens if we go to war and they do the draft and then it's like, of course it's gonna make them feel like invincible. Like, oh, what do you mean? I know how to, I know how to load up and I know how to get ready to go. And like, I know how to shoot. But then like, you know, the real life situation comes with sand in your face or fucking the heat, I'm, dr I'm thirsty, I got to piss, <laughs> fucking, oh my God, there's actually fucking an IUD that just went off of my hands fucking doing this and I got to fucking coordinate right. And oh my God, there's somebody there and I'm too excited and I'm popping rounds off and totally missing. And then I take one in the shoulder, like, that's the reality of life like that that that's that's been being implanted that 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 won't happen to you because you're invincible so or like all the marvel movies like you know i'm a superhero or even the weird part of like you know superman right like that came out during the beginnings of when we found pluto and like this idea like he's an alien, but he's a human and he's a news reporter, but he's Superman, but this kryptonite can get him. There, all these things have been embedded really deeply for, I feel like this cross moment. And, and it, it's weird because I think the VR stuff is definitely a concern, but I feel like the concern is more about what's being like, has somebody self programmed themselves without realizing it? through these other means that when you lock into those spaces, that sub programming kicks in, right? Whereas like being a developer into it, I, when I got into VR, wasn't, I, I didn't go the normal route in. I didn't go like, Ooh, cause I want to play some game. I want to play or something. It was like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm helping these guys be the astrologer to help develop this cool ass astrology fucking virtual reality app. So like I went into it with like a positive intention and trying to teach people their chart and like have a fun game to learn about their planet and like actually be able to like, if you're a fire, like throw fire at the planet and show you the revealing and what does that mean in this sign, then show you the planets in your own houses from a like 3d point of view, 360 point of view. But that's not the same as this other shit coming out now, especially in Apple vision pro it's, also trying to catalog your whole iPhone and move it over to that, right? So it's all about spatial video now, which is 3D immersive video. So it's like only iPhone 15s can do it, where Pros or Pro Max is where you can take these third cameras were not because of, oh yeah, like we can cook cooler portrait videos. It's now for 3D spatial video. And when you take one, it's about recording your video memories and having it to where it's 3D in Apple Vision Pro, right? So it's almost like they're trying to move and catalog people into your personal life, your text messages, your emails, your Mac hooks up to it, your fucking, every part of it is hooked up to it. So especially your photos, like in mine, when I load it up, like I have my photo app that we have on our iPhones and you know how the, if you, if you go in your photo app, it'll just go like a memory will pop up. Right. And then like, we'll make a reel. Imagine 
they're doing that now in this cool, crazy, radical spatial reality where you choose the environment. And in the corner, in the perfect corner, it pops up with the memory and you can just like look at it and double click with your eyes and fucking it starts playing it. So it's already doing the whole <clears throat> setting you up kind of thing. So how do you click with your eyes? So you can choose in the settings if you want to use the point with your eyes. You can do eye click. So you so can like click for blinking? a little longer by blinking. No. Or you can even just do a point and hold it for long enough and then it will do it. Or the typical way is just the tap with your finger. That's all you have to do. And that's why they have so many cameras. They have cameras below so I can just be on the couch and not have to move my hand up and be lazy and use my eyes and look wherever I want to go and then... Just tap. What's weird is it's the one that doesn't have a boundary. So if you're an Oculus, before you go in, they go, draw your boundary. Because I can walk around the house with my Oculus, right? Because I play ping pong and shit, and that shit, it feels real. Like, I don't know how they do it, but it's like I feel like I'm playing ping pong on a normal table. And, and there's no hitting of anything. But because the same way that you brought up the hand fucking experiment, it's the same fucking thing. Mm -hmm. When I hit the ping pong ball, it feels like I'm hitting it with the spin and it spins exactly like the fucking spin I do in ping pong. Or when I bowl, I bowl like I bowl. And it feels like I'm holding a bowling ball, even though it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Right? But what's crazy is Apple Vision Pro doesn't have the boundaries, right? So like, you know, in ping pong, if I'm, I, I, it was funny when I first started p playing ping pong, I was in my lot apartment before we got our house and it was before Sophia was me. And I remember I'd have to like clear some shit around and I, I fucking play hard and I would like know the boundary cause it'll show you if you get, you get really close, like the boundaries will show up. And I'm like, I know in my head that that's the fucking kitchen sink. I don't want to fucking run into that fucking at five miles an hour jumping and fucking crack my head open. <laughs> right. But with Apple vision pro, there's no boundary cause they have the best cameras. So you, when I turn it to just augmented reality, meaning I'm, I'm in, this reality, but I could have a screen and just be like looking at you. It's so clear. They don't put boundaries. So if somebody walks in the room and I'm in the environment, they call it where I'm like, let's say I'm on the moon and that's my environment. If my wife walks in, it will show just enough of her face walking by in the reality that I'm in that I'm not in that reality. So they're trying to blur this reality that we've all known into the realities that we're creating in there. You know, that's fucking creepy. You know, I knew somebody who had a near death experience and she claimed that she exited the game, exited the matrix and came out of the pod on the other side. And I thought it was fascinating. And we, we used to hang out with her a lot. And she was saying that whenever you, Whenever like one of your guides or whatever incarnates, that's what's happening is that they're actually coming up next to you, next to your pod and talking to you. And, and, and to hear you say that, I'm like, dude, that sounds very much like what this lady was saying that like whenever your guides or whatever, you know, whenever they want to, when they're talking to you, they're, they're coming up to you in your pod and they're talking to you in your ear and they can make themselves visible. You know, they can incarnate, they can do something to make themselves visible in this matrix. And I don't know, just hearing you say that is, is making me think, holy shit. See, this is, this is just a matrix inside of a matrix is, 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 what, is what we're doing. We're just going down lower and lower. And maybe that's what they mean by going down lower in vibration, down lower into another matrix, you know? It's creepy, man. Yeah, I mean, that's like the inception idea of like a dream, like the idea of cracking somebody's subconscious by going into their dreams and then taking it down another level and then inoculating them with this hypnosis and then going down to the other level of the dreams till they get to the deepest part of the subconscious where if they don't wake themselves up from a dream within a dream within a dream, they could be stuck down there for 100, 200 years, right? Then each level that you go down, it's longer the, the sedative they have to take, the longer and the deeper they go that they won't wake up. Like my question in, has been, and this was a long time ago, is like when we think of God, and let's say God evolves, right? So God has an awakening experience. It moves to the next timeline and level. Everything prior that God's created would, would, would ascend up with it, right? 
how far down the line are we to the actual source God, like of the realities? And I think that's what, what could be the weird big ball breaker to religion, right? Is like, they feel like it's kind of like a direct shot. Like, no, we're the one plane and then it's God next, right? That's like been the idea of religion, right? You're on earth, then you go to heaven. But what if there's, I don't know, 180,000 way down like levels that we have and it could be that you know like think of financial distress like in the system of the world today obviously they're going to come up with some fucking thing to try and you know give a reason to why this system doesn't work anymore and then they reset to another one right how many realities has humanity or are we even human done that right so it's like Every time we do that, do we go farther away from God? And how many times has it felt farther away? And that's what's kind of trippy to me. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we could go down that rabbit hole all day, but I don't. I don't think. I don't think that these ideas that we're coming up with are too far fetched. I mean, mm. we're we're seeing it right there. And it's kind of no. Creepy. There's people walking around with that shit. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can see it. You can see it out there. You can see people driving around in their cars with the damn thing on, you know, and it's it's right there. And, and I'm just wondering what's the next step. So so like basically whenever they get whoever whoever they're going to get to to trap themselves in that matrix. What about those of us who refuse it? You know, then what? And what are we going to do? Is our is this avatar body of ours finally going to like upgrade because it's part of the computer game like like w that video we were watching earlier was that alex jones talking to elon musk well they're saying it was like an elon clone that's what the guy was saying but it sounded like his voice exactly but it could have been ai he was saying voice, there, there you know? is no real world anyway and i'm right. thinking dude that's that's the, what i'm thinking that's the reason why you could never get a straight answer as to you know is Why the we're earth here? round or flat? It's a fucking video game, <laughs> you know. Like, like I've seen. It can't. It it could have been flat, and then it evolved to being round off evolution. Or we're in a hologram. They could have just changed the hologram, right? So maybe it really was flat. Or if you think of Tartaria, like all the Tartarian buildings, right? Like it could have been that was part of it, and then they switched the hologram. Well, here, here's you know what I mean. Yeah, and here's the thing about the firmament. Because this idea has been tripping me up for a while. There's a, a firmament. And I even saw a video where some people, some college students made a homemade rocket with a camera on it and shot it up. And it kept going up and up and up. And then it went pow and it hit something and then fell. So I'm thinking, have you ever played a video game? Back in the day, there was this old like spaceship game on like Windows 95 called Fury 3. Yeah. Did I you play, that you game. play yes. Fury 3? You go up and up and up and up. Right. Eventually the game won't go any farther right. and it stops you. See where I'm going with this? I know exactly where you're going <laughs> with it. I mean, that that's actually what, how video games are made, right? Like, especially those first ones in the 90s, especially like the, one of the bigger ones was like Wolfenstein 3D. You know, you just walked around in 2D and you open the doors and there was like secret little doors like through the bricks that you could get and get some extra shit. Yeah. But like, if you like break down the background, like there's boundaries and like, that's all it is. And then you could like do cheat code stuff and go in the develop and then leave out. But then you're just like walking out into nothing. Right. And yeah. then come back in. Right. Like when, whenever like video games started getting big in PCs, I used to fucking hack those things. And then like, you know, you could like get out of the video game, but it wasn't that fun. Cause it's like, well, they didn't build any structure out here. So I'm just like hanging out in the nothingness. Or if you even think how creepy the whole video game thing's gone throughout the years, like The Sims became a huge thing, right? I wasn't ever really into The Sims. It was kind of like... Oh, man. Leah, I was into Sim City. Leah plays that thing all day, every day. <laughs> oh, well, well, I got to have a talk with her. <laughs> but, like, that's kind of like... Is that what's happening here? Because, like, Sim City is what started The Sims. Yeah. And, and Sim City was a great game because it was awesome. You You had to start from nothing and you had to get enough people and you had to build the train tracks, you had to build the electrical, you had to build the power plant and you had to like do it the old school way. And then, at the, you know, once you built it, you got bored. And what did you do? Get fucking King Kong in here. Or I mean, uh, no, it was, I think, uh, fucking the Asian uh, fucking 
I don't know why I can't remember it. Not King Kong, fucking whatever that thing's called. I don't know what you're thinking of? It's on the tip of my tongue. It's on the tip of my tongue too. It's like Godzilla. whatever. Yeah, Godzilla to come through, <clears throat> or make an earthquake, or set everything on fire, right? Just to just to have some fun to rebuild it all again and get all the you know, and like that's like the chaos. Like the order gets too boring. Then we go to chaos, and then the chaos gets too much, and then the order, and that's that's where alchemy is the understanding of. So it's kind of like, are they bored with both now? <laughs> right? Like chaos is boring because we know how the order works and order is boring because we know how to bring chaos. It's like how we, I, we just saw that short about some woman claim that she's tri gender. Yeah. <laughs> and I still am wrapping my head. Like what, what, what is tri gender? They think they, well, I don't even understand they, it. These people think that your gender is something that you feel. They think your gender is how you feel. That's not your gender. Your gender is not how you feel. Your gender is your is biology. How you feel is your energy. These people don't understand that you feel masculine or feminine energy. They're confusing energy for gender. If you're a man and you feel incredibly feminine, that's fine. You have very feminine energy if you're a man, but that doesn't mean you feel like a woman. That means you feel very feminine. So these people are, what they're doing, what the, what the fucking narcissists who like to brainwash people did was they convinced people that your energy was your gender. Mm. So, so you have all these people now who they're playing around with all these energies in their head, you know, and they're getting confused, and they think, oh, all my energies are all my different genders. No, no. So... Oh, that poor lady, I feel kind of bad for her. But I mean, that, that what we saw there was just a, a little TikTok trend. You know, people, like we've talked before, there are so many people who are just so desperately wanting to be famous just for no reason. And one really, really easy way to get attention is to get on TikTok and say, oh, I have three genders and my pronouns are Zay, Zier, and Zong, and Zink. And, and people watch that shit. So, I mean, a lot of it, I think, is probably just an act, you know, just to get attention. And I mean, if Tom McDonald fucking responds to your video, it probably works, I would imagine, you know? So, um, I don't know if I would if I would uh, drive myself nuts trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, but, but I, I, you know, cause then I saw another clip the other day of like, you know, some guy was calling some girl out cause she claimed she's a dog. Like, yeah. And then it's like, oh, you know, he's like, well, you want to have a gentleman? She's like, yeah, damn right. I do. And it's like, yeah. okay, but you, 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 you say you're a dog. So are you looking for like a dog owner or a dog trainer? Or are you looking for, a, a, you know, like, 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 and I was just like, it's kind of sad because there's just so many people kind of jumping on to whatever they think is cool, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I just like, don't, don't like, yeah, it's, it, I don't know why, but you know, it's not like I feel like I want to pee standing up, but that <laughs> is how it just naturally happened. It, it's not like I... <laughs> It's not like I wake up going, I can't wait to pee standing up. I just feel so good doing that. Yeah. I have the choice to pee sitting down too. <laughs> but that just kind of is not like, I don't go outside and pee sitting down. <laughs> right? The cool thing about being a guy is we could pee anywhere. Yeah. I mean, girls can too. Don't get me wrong. Like, there's some solid ass chicks out there that know what the fuck they're doing. Like, I don't care. I'll fucking squat right here. Yeah. But as a dude, you know, like, you would never know. We could just be looking like we're on the phone, like looking in a corner, and we're just pissing. Right. That's biology, though. Yeah. I don't know how it would be to have a dog tail because I don't have a tail. Nobody has a tail. So I, I just think we're at a weird moment here because the VR thing has its ups and downs. But the, I think the downtrend is the Neuralink because already they're doing it. And you know what? I didn't even think of that until now. You already told me about the hand thing experiment last week. 
But now that I'm thinking about it, like why does fucking playing ping pong feel so real in there? It's because it's not how well their technology is. It's how well they know that they've placed the right positioning for you to then do it to feel like it's actually happening. Yeah, it's the way your brain works. That's crazy. <clears throat> your brain, like the the way your brain processes information, you know, it it doesn't, your subconscious mind doesn't understand the difference between what you're thinking about and what you're experiencing. And your body and the the relationship your brain has with your body doesn't understand the difference between what's happening and what you're thinking that you're seeing because... You know, when you look around at you, you're you're just seeing a bunch of fucking electromagnetic frequencies that your your brain is trying to interpret what mm-hmm. it sees, and and then that's what makes up what you feel. You're not feeling objective reality; you're feeling what your brain thinks is objective reality. So when you have that VR headset on, your brain thinks that's objective reality. So you're going to experience it as if it is. And that's the way the brain works, and they know this. They know this very, very well. So that's why I said it would be nothing. It would be nothing for them to, to put a fucking headset on you and suck you into a new matrix easily. Right. Well, and I think, too, that when you start seeing people now walking in an augmented reality on the street and they're projecting now screens and, and, and being in an XR augmented reality... That, that's just mind-blowing to me that people are walking around with it like it's normal. It already looks like weird as fuck, right? But that's like where the next version is. So like when I was at the com- conference, I, uh, Conscious Life Expo, like my friend uh, JK Ultra, she has the new Ray-Ban Metas. And it was cool because like, I was like, oh, those are them. I actually saw them. And then she showed me them. And I'm like, those are cool. And then she sent and tagged me in Aurora and or me, Aurora and Sophia, and the video of us taking our Aurora pictures. And that was from her glasses. And then a combo that I was having, which she told me she'd be recording. I'm like, that's cool. But I had forgot that she was recording. So it was like, how did she get that cool combo? Like, that's that angle. Oh, it was from those glasses. So I bought them. And I've been doing it for the last couple of days. But when I was looking to buy them, there's all these companies out there that already have to projection where your phone can project in the glasses. They're not big companies. They're like Chinese companies, but you can do all of that now. And those are the number one selling thing now. Not the meta, the fucking off-brand names that are fucking projecting where, yeah, you want to watch a movie on your sunglasses? Like you want to see your text messages in your sunglasses while you're walking around? So believe it or not, even though the Apple Vision Pro is like a big thing and people could see it, people are walking around right now with glasses that they could see that. Or like the new glasses I have, like those Ray-Ban ones, like I can listen to Spotify, be on a phone call. Like I was on the phone, like you saw me, I was on the phone with my sunglasses talking to my brother, talking to my stepdad, fucking like we went out and did shit. I took pictures, like fucking I went live fucking today, driving. Like, so that's already out. So it's like all this stuff is kind of side by side happening at the same time. I don't know, man. I, I think that when it gets to this Neuralink shit, maybe that's what's kind of like the weird thing is making people think, oh, unless it's plugged into my brain, I'll be okay. When actually you bring up the AI robot thing with the sex stuff, like that, that shit to me like dehumanizes and then makes people feel really weird. And then especially the weird shit that people are doing at these brothels with them, that shit's fucking really weird. But maybe enough times they'll actually think that's a real human at some point. Because it's the same thing, right? Like, if you're going to do it long enough, you're going to think it's just as good. Yeah. Well, I wonder if (laughs) somebody would... Like if somebody bought one of those fuck dolls. Uh, now, now uh, again, we have to think who's buying these things. That that's the first thing we have to think. Like, think about who's buying that thing. Now, it's probably not going to be a dude that can get laid. <laughs> probably. Right. Not. So if he's a dude that can't get laid, he probably doesn't have much of a social life either. 
So the likelihood that if he gets this cute little fuck doll in his house, he's just going to lock himself in his house. Maybe that's just, in the, you know how they were trying to get everybody to stay home? Well, and they were promoting weird sex shit, like get a sex doll or get, yeah, d- or masturbate with your fucking partner. Don't have sex because you don't want to get fucking COVID. Like what? Yeah. Or build a glory hole in your house. <laughs> And I guarantee you, because the government, we already saw the government said shit and people did it, right? Like, like weirdos. Guarantee you, there's at least one person who went, oh, okay, let me go in their garage. Let me make a glory hole into their drywall and told their girlfriend or their wife or whatever, get on the other side or their boyfriend. They're a dude. Uh Get on the other side of the wall. (laughs) I mean, so... But I think that to go to your point of, yeah, locking themselves in, it's also women, women are fucking freaking out right now. Like, especially in the spiritual community, there are not a lot of men that are like alpha male, like just like men that can be spiritual, right? It's like they walk, they they, they play the spiritual game and like, ha 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 ha. It reminds me of like when, when, you know, Sasha uh, Cohen, like when he plays fucking, um, not Borat, but when he's always playing Bruno, mm. right? Like, ha, 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 he, you know, like, like how he, how he's like, ha, ha like, oh, we're going to a tea ceremony, ha, 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 right? Like, so they're already dealing with that. Then you're dealing with like all these people that want to be poly and open relationship, like weird, like, you know, and then they have all these weird lines are crossed. And then it's like, then there's this thing, like, I think Tantra is like a cool thing, but I feel like it's more of a, flex now to try and be like oh i'm i'm really connected about my understanding fully and i feel like there's actual real deep spiritual tantric teachers and people out there but i think there's a lot of others that are not like and right so like now you mix in all this weird shit it's like getting rid of the ability to see more of humanity getting rid of men who could probably even create testosterone anymore even fucking make sperm because it's going inside of a i don't even know what they make those ai dolls out of but silicone (laughs) or something i don't know or like the first question you you and i both had but we i asked i said it and you said i thought the same thing is like at the brothels i'm like who's who's cleaning up those dolls (laughs) like yeah Yeah, man i mean like to be honest with you like like i know like you know sleeping around's dirty but like the idea of like sticking my dick inside of a fucking ai doll at a brothel seems worse and dirtier is that weird i mean again i I know i keep (laughs) keep saying this and i keep defaulting to this but i can't help but think who's doing this who's doing that Who's who's now now you know we, we regular brothels you know any any well those like barely exist anymore yeah but even back in the day regular brothels I mean e- even some of the most successful men on the planet would go to those you know but who the fuck is going to a brothel and paying money to fuck a plastic doll who who is doing this that's what I can't wrap my mind around I want to know who's doing this who's the client base who are the customers I can't wrap my mind around them actually being able to target a a, 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 a high value man or, or a masculine man or a, a you know a, an alpha male I ain't no alpha males going to fucking brothels fucking little plastic fuck dolls so i don't know so in a way i'm, I'm kind of swaying over to the other side of the of the the argument mm-hmm. a little bit and i'm thinking is it really going to create the problem that we think or, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe, maybe some dudes out there are like, you know what? I'm getting fucking tired of women and their shit and that big loud ass mouth and then bitching and complaining and whining all the time. That looks just like a real bitch. I'd rather have that. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. What do you, what do you think? Do you have a, I mean, I personally think the opposite. I think that men if like like if it's what makes you want to be with the woman is a bit of the chase right you need that chase you need to you need to you need to and like truly like prove your chivalry to her enough to be accepted and and that's still and and so if it's too easy 
we get over it as a guy. If the chick's so easy that <laughs> it's just like I didn't have to do anything, you're not on the list ever. Yeah. Right? So if, if guys are that way, I feel like the way that you said, oh, like chicks, if they're just their mouths run and they're being a bitch, fuck this, I'm going to go with this. All that AI doll has to do is just be like, like, it, it, let, let's get, I don't mind. I'll be the fucking weirdo. I'll be like, yeah, baby, fucking call me fucking daddy. And it's like, okay, Randy. No, <laughs> I said, call me fucking daddy. <laughs> yes, Randy. Fucking boom. Like, right. And then they start getting angry and they start because they think they can. Yeah. Okay. And then that's where the desensitization, descent, like, right. So then they just like go on the street. They find some random woman. And they're mm. like, oh, she fucking just cut me off in the fucking line of the fucking Starbucks. Fuck you, bitch. And fucking hit, you know what I mean? And then, yeah, or yeah. going and grabbing to steal and like, oh, it doesn't matter. And then it turns into fucking Patrick Bateman, mm -hmm. you know, and, and American yeah. Psycho, you know? I, I did notice uh, my, my patience with AIs very short. Fucking chat GPT. Like, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm wondering if that thing... This is just a theory of mine. I don't know if you agree with this or not, but I'm wondering, I'm suspicious that it might be programmed to piss you off a little bit on purpose. I'm wondering, just to study to see how you react to it, just to study human behavior, because like... Well, yeah, it's machine learning. Yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking that there's no way that, that this thing is that stupid. This thing can create the most fucking phenomenal images but it, because I, I, I was trying to create a tarot card, okay, a simple tarot card, and and you mean to tell me this thing can create these fucking amazingly, phenomenally realistic images, but it can't count seven wands? I said no. I want seven wands. It puts twenty of them all over the fucking thing. I'm like, no, stupid. I'm calling it names. I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. You're not artificial intelligence. You're an artificial idiot. Like, I mean, I'm getting pissed off at this thing. And then I had to put my phone down. I'm like, whoa, this thing is pissing me off. I wonder if it's doing that on purpose. And that's when I got the thought. I think, it, I think this thing's pissing me off on purpose. You know? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many times when I was playing video games as a kid that I had buddies or even myself throw the fucking controller like, gee, fuck this shit. Yeah. Right? Or... Oh my God, I'm ready to do the report. I just, or I just wrote something and the fucking computer pros, right? That's where it's like, I mean, that's kind of in anything in life, right? You could be the quill fucking runs out of ink, <laughs> right? I'm sure that there was plenty of quill pens thrown <laughs> around like eight of wands in the air. Foo, 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 and hitting somebody <laughs> like, you know, but I, you know, like, but I feel like you're right. I mean, it, 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 it you know why? Cause it has a lot of fucking barriers, right? Like they like, Oh no, that's not appropriate. Right. Or that's the, you know, that's not diverse enough or, you know, like that's, what's really weird is like, there's been like the programming has been done by the very extreme kind of irony of the, supposedly liberals that are about free speech that are not or freedom of expression, which are not. And, and so the, the, I think there's a, that barrier is what always frustrates me. I'm like, 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 of course you can't say like, I had to make a thumbnail last week for the Royals. Cause like Charles the third has cancer. And I have a theory that he's been fucking princess Kate for the whole time. And his son knows this and, the Royals have been known to do that throughout history. Like they, you know, if the King's the King, he's, he will do whatever he wants. So I'm like trying to get Kate to be in a, so I had to like say, no, this is a concept for a dramatic TV show, right? Where I'm not saying that they're King Charles or Kate or William who's balding and 40. I was like, make a 30 year old brunette, white English woman who looks like she's royal, but she's trashy, like a stripper who's crying and at the bedside of this old 77 year old English man wearing a Burger King crown crown 
<laughs> in his hospice bed while his 40 year old balding son who knows his wife's been cheating on him with his own father is crying and ready to receive the crown they knew that i was trying to do the, the scenario of them that i was screaming because i use the talk to text on the on the app on my android it's really good on that one so i'm like no like i said again 42 bald fucking make him a pussy ass loser who's getting the crown and make sure that he has reddish fucking balding hair with a burger king crown you know <laughs> i got really close actually it did come out really good but fucking it took like 90 19 times i don't know and i'm driving to conscious life expo screaming that shit <laughs> or yeah. i was driving to work and then i went to conscious life expo yeah but yeah. i was driving screaming no da -da -da -da. i was screaming because when it's talk to text i'm just like i was kind of laughing though but at the same time i was like no and i treat the ai like you need to do this but then that's where i know if you dip into the sex world with it Oh, geez. I already don't even want to know. But I think there's going to be a lot of frustration. And how many times are people going to break it? I ripped the head off. You know, like she was, she was not doing what I said it to do. It's the same thing that like Dolly, like part of a uh, open AI, like I guarantee you the chat GPT is going to be like, Hey baby. And it's going to be like, the voice is not going to sound like a girl and be like, Hey baby. <laughs> and be like, no, change your voice back to da, da, da. Mom, file not found. Hey baby. You know, file not found, you know, air regenerate the voice. Now it's going to be like, ha, you know, like, no, you sound like my fucking school teacher. Like, no, you know, like, but nah, ah, it's just like, what's the ball? Fuck. But again, I think that gets rid of the, also the human understanding of like, we have to relate with other people. Like we can't force other, I can't like force my wife to be like, do this, do that, be that way. Bend mm -hmm. over that way and fucking scream that way. Exactly at this tone. And I want it to be 90 decibels loud. And I'm calculating it on my fucking eye watch. Right? But that's where people I feel will go. Or in those crazy places. And then that's, that's already where people expect that in the Tinder dating world right like people create these kind of fantasies in their head like they need to have gone to college have a credit score of this they need to wear this kind of clothing they need to have this kind of hair they need to have done this they need to have done that and if they have one thing wrong no and then that's why they're alone and the dude that they like who just comes to fuck them once a month because he's fucking other chicks doesn't ever pick them because he knows that you're too precise in what you want, that you'll never be good enough. Right. We see a lot of that right now. And that's another birth rate problem, right? There's too many 40 year old women who are trying to have babies now and not working out. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad. It is sad, you know, and, and hopefully that's, that's what we're going to put an end to. You but know. you know that's why they can go get an apple vision pro and then they can get a new app once it'll be out maybe i'll create it that'll be like be a mom it's not gonna be real of course but they'll believe it <laughs> like they could look like they're holding a baby but they won't actually have to deal with the spit up they won't have to deal with changing the diaper they won't have to deal with i don't know i'm doing everything i can and the baby doesn't want to latch or the baby doesn't want to do this but no, in the little perfect little fucking Apple Vision world, it'll be like that baby's just perfect and all nice. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, it's just like having my dog that just does everything that I want and it's all perfect. It's like, no, that's not how life works. And that's where I think that when it starts integrating into those kind of situations, which that's an offer that, you know, when you go to have a child now that they offered Sophia, like, oh, do you want to go into VR to like have the experience of like holding the baby and stuff? Like she didn't go through that. It's like, no, I'll just like, right. So they're already implementing that. Think about cars, think about driving, think about, but it's like, well, they're trying to do automated driving. So it's more like, well, while you're in your car ride, just put on this and go in this other world. So nobody's going to want to be in an automated car. What are you going to do? You're not, you're, you're not going to be just wanting to look at the road. You're going to be like, put on a screen, but they're not going to put a screen in a car. They're just going to be like, here, have a set headset on. That's the thing. So every airplane, I bet you in one year, 
is going to start having VR headsets. Tune out the plane. Tune out the person next to you. Oh, that'll be tempting. right because they're going to come from it that way, right? Like we're having too many. What happened during COVID, right? Was like people started getting on planes, and getting massive drunk, and started fighting. Right? Remember that? It was just like fight, 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 fight. That's going to be their way. Like, nope. You, you when you're on the plane, you have to wear this. Oh, and by the way, to make you feel safer, it's a floating device, and it has oxygen that will come out. So there's no more dropping the oxygen mask, but this thing is a mask that will give you oxygen if you need it. It's plugged in. Don't worry. Hmm. And FAA law requires us to do this. And it also has eye tracking to make sure that you're a legal immigrant or a legal citizen in this country. That's why that you're seeing the influx of immigrants is it's. And, and then the other part is like, nobody's thinking about like, you can do everything that you want to get in, we haven't tested about how, you know, how hard it is to get out of this country. You know, you have to like, oh, to get in the other country, I got to go show this and I got to show that and I got to show this. Is that for a reason? You know, like you can get in, but you can't get out. And that's how all the countries are going. Well, I think, I think <clears throat> it's almost inevitable that we're going to see a temporary population collapse. You know, we, I, I've been thinking of every angle we can hit this from to try to prevent this. And I don't think we're going to be able to, you know, I just, with, with the, the insanity in today's day and age with, you know, the way things are going and, and the family being split apart and men being feminized and women being masculinized and, and people thinking that they have three genders and, you know, people fucking fuck dolls and shit. I think we're going to, in the next 20 or 30 years we're gonna see a temporary population collapse it's gonna collapse and it's gonna go down to a relatively small number for a little bit but i and i think this may have to do with what you were saying a minute ago i may have heard you wrong but but where you were saying the old b b before the next version of humans come the old version dies off right so the the this version of us that has been for the past hundred years or so is gonna die off and then you know the planet's gonna be kind of sparse the population is gonna be very thin and then you know it'll rebuild itself but it'll be a, a more upgraded version of human i think from the next point that's what i think the higher timeline is because isn't it fucked up that we can so clearly see the lower timeline but the higher timeline, it's like, where's the path to that? It's so clear to see the path to the lower timeline. It's like, that's all we can see. But why is it so hard to see the path to the higher timeline? You know what I mean? I, I, I think that a lot of it is because we're dealing with, well, the merging of lots of timelines and, and, and where those all can go and then different realities that people are choosing. I mean, like the second that, they start implementing more than visual, which is what if, so if we think of like the five senses, right? So they're, they're messing with the visual. They're not messing with the sense of smell yet, or there's minor touch, but you know, it's like, they're not giving you taste yet. Well, right. So once they start like doing for women, because no woman poops, remember that. <laughs> But that they can go into put on an Apple Vision Pro and it sprays poopery. And instead of them looking like they're in a bathroom, it looks like they're in a garden of angels. Right. <laughs> and it's like this in water and like all this beautiful stuff happening. And then when it, it won't even they won't even have to like touch the flusher. It's an automatic flush by the way that they they just step up and they leave and the bidets their butt and all that. And it's like the angels come and pull them up when they're walking up and it spurts poopery, right? And it's like, what do you mean? I didn't go to the bathroom. That's just an angel world, you know, until where they actually believe, because I believe that we will come to a timeline where women believe they don't poop because they already <laughs> don't believe that. that that doesn't exist. So, like that's how they're gonna soft roll that, you know, and 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 like that's when it's gonna get weird is when they mix touch, smell, taste. Well, I mean, right? I, I I think the rabbit hole goes deeper when it comes to the whole 
what I'm talking about, about your mind creating the reality. Like I right. seriously believe that, that once, once you start falling into that world, <clears throat> your brain will create it. Your brain will create the smells and the tastes. Like, like That's I said, true. all the sensory input we get, we, the, the illusion that makes this, this matrix that we live in so fucking convincing is that we think that this is objective reality. We think it is because it's so real and intense, but all it is, is our brain deciphering what it thinks is out there. You don't, your eyes don't see shit. Your brain does. Your ears don't right. hear shit. Your brain does. Very good point. So it's like. I seriously think that your, your brain's creating all this, what it thinks is out there. So in the augmented reality, when it comes to all other sensory input, including smell and taste, I bet your brain could fucking create it after a certain period of time. You know, it's not something that's going to happen overnight, but over time, you get yes. stuck in there, your brain will start creating all your other sensory input. I don't know, man. It's trippy. It's but, I, you know, and that's true. I mean, I remember the smell of like the first CDs I got, like the little... I don't know what is like I can remember the smell. Like, you know, you can remember the 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 taste of like your like best first kiss, you know what I mean? Like there's these kind of but it has to be like really extreme moments. I'm wondering if that's where they have to do it though to do that is like create these extreme moments. It's almost like they're doing that in the reality, but that that's the hard part is like People talk about Project Blue Meat, and we've talked about it as being this experience that's projected in the sky. What if everything that the news has been saying is, and the who's the president and all that shit, has been Project Blue Beam? To where then people then go, I don't want to deal with this anymore. And like, you know what? This is a better place to go. It's escapism as its finest, right? Like, I'm just going to escape into here. I don't poop. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm doing this. I have my AI sex robot that, you know, I know they can't get my name right. It's fucking daddy, not Randy, but I'll deal with it. But is that going to be memorable, you know? And I think that's where it gets really weird. And I think you're right, though, because that reality that people can create in their brain, that's how it works. And that's what's crazy is like the idea that people think that this is already real when it's their brain and how it's wired and the frequency I mean, that's what psychedelics really is awesome with, is making you realize that there is a sixth, even maybe seventh sense that's higher, right? Like that there's more to this and that you can reprogram your own shit. But that was before there was all the other shit around that could really kind of come inside and fuck with your shit more than ever now. And that's why Starlink is up there now. That's why, you know, 5G and all this shit, right? So that's the next level of like, that interconnectedness and and then that's where i feel like even crypto i know that everybody thinks it's a savior but i've always said whenever pluto comes into a new sign and it's always usually you know we've been used to it more of like a 12 14 16 year cycle now it's going to be a 20 year one so they're very rare it's always the savior energy that comes up like obama was the one that looked like he was going to save the day obviously he wasn't and so right now, the idea that crypto is going to save the day, it's the biggest facade. That who? Crypto, like cryptocurrency, oh, crypto. right? Like like the way that, oh my God, Bitcoin just went to 50,000. And so everybody's just hyping and da da da, da right? It's like, it, it's not going to save the day. Like, you know, like it, it, whatever looks like it's going to save the day is always what doesn't. And, and that what's being propagated at this moment, it, it looks like it's going to save the day is the thing that doesn't. I mean, that was exactly what happened during the recession. Oh, that was the last thing we had to cover was that I think that maybe instead of like escaping or being afraid of whatever the projection or even if it is a fucking Project Blue Bean alien that shows up, it's about the moments of like 2008, the recession, I lost my job. That's what got me on my path to do this job. Like it was like when the mm -hmm. shit happens, it's to get you in alignment with what's right for you. Yeah. Cause we were just at the beach and we were just fucking doing some shit that we were doing some shit, yeah, some shit, <laughs> literally. But it was funny because you were like, I'd love to fucking be able to live right here. And I was like, it's crazy, dude. I lived right here, like live right down that street for three years of my life when I was 20 or 19 through 22 and fucking, 
I did not want to leave, but then I lost my jobs and then the fucking economy was bad. And then I was like, fuck it. And so I sold everything and nobody believed in me. And I thought I would be able to make it off the 19, 21 year olds, like furniture, which is nothing and a play, a PlayStation two. And if, you know, I sold that shit, had like 1500 bucks and thought I was fucking king. That didn't last long. <laughs> and then I went for two years to figure out this career and fucking it was, it was, it was hard, but it was what, what meant to happen to get me out of that, to not be trapped in that, to get to where I needed to go. So maybe these moments that everybody's so freaked out about is exactly the thing that needs to end to get you on your right timeline. Instead of us looking at it like, I don't want to go through the timeline. Maybe that is how you get to the timeline is going through it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's exactly, exactly what it is. And that's, that's, that's the whole point of this show. That's the whole point of the things that I talk about, even in my tarot card readings. And that's like the whole point of the career and finance readings that I did. You know, that's the whole point is, is to, to help people understand how to glide through it. Cause I mean, I'd be lying if I said, I'm not nervous. I'm a little bit nervous. You know, I'm a human too. I have an ego too. Right. I don't know what's going to happen. I have goals. I have things I want to do this year that I hope happen and you know they may happen they may not but even if even if some of the things even if things don't go the way that i plan like i know for a fact that one of these days i'm going to be looking back on this and this is going to be the good old days like i i, I that if you look back if you give an honest look back if you're on any kind of of evolutionary path at all when you take a look back at some of the hardest times in your life after a certain point you'll look back at that with nostalgia like you know what that, that, that was a fun little journey. Now, when I was in it, it sucked. When I was going through it, it wasn't all that fun. But you're always going to look back on it and miss it. So no matter what it is that we go through this year, this too shall pass. Yeah. And one of these days, we're going to be looking back on it like it was the best thing that ever happened. Yeah, and I think that's what was cool about what we did with our imagery is like showing the world just all fucked up and showing all these people in their VR just like sitting down there and the whole fucking world's just like torn apart. That's not the world that we're going to go through. I don't think that's the way that it's done. I don't think that it's crypto or, oh, well, this technology will make us feel better. It's about remembering that no matter what is happening, whether it's financial or whether it's technology or whether it's war or whether it's whatever, it's that exact gliding through that you just said that gets you to the right timeline because what isn't meant to be will take you to what is meant to be and i know we can all be scared but to be honest with you we just have to it's like there is no perfect part of life like i mean we we're still at the age to where it's like oh we still have a lot of life and all that shit but you know i i, I actually worry more like what's it gonna feel like being like 70 and being like shit <laughs> you know like i i don't know if i'll be able to do this or that the same way again or whatever I mean, I'm sure I'll, I'll David Goggins, the motherfucker, but you know, like those are the times that I kind of look at more as like, huh, eh, you know, but I still like, think we all have to take the red pill again. I think that's, what's hard, right? You wake up, you take the red pill and then it's like it's fucking awesome. It's been an awesome journey. And then what you, you want me to take that shit again and have to go through the whole tumultuous process again. And I think that's where we're at, but I think that it's a lot easier the second time than the first time. Yeah. And I think that, you know, even today, you and I had like all these crazy synchronicities happening mm -hmm. and it was like huge. And that's why I love having, and we were talking about friendships too. That's the other thing. You and I've lost so many friends over years when we were younger. And when you go through your awakening experience, just friendships just fall apart and that's okay. It's not like they're bad people or it's just not aligned anymore. It's not a frequency match. Right. So, but, you know, it's great when you start being around people and there's frequency matches and it's just like, it, it kind of helps you see things better, right? It was just like, oh, of course. Like, so you asked me a question. My brother called me the, an, within the hour and asked me the same fucking question. So I'm like, okay, I need to fucking make that call that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, like, we have all these synchronicities happening. My stepdad said something to you. You're like, I was just talking last night to Leah about that, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, okay, that obviously there's some, that means the universe has doors that are still opening and that you're not going down that timeline. So if you're not having synchronicities, that, that would probably be the simplest thing is like, okay, there's gonna, yeah, maybe you should be tripping out because you're obviously not wanting to, 
You're not open. And maybe it's that feeling of having sometimes that fear that actually is what awakens us again to go, wait, hold on. And to be more aware of, because maybe we get too comfortable and we're not looking for the synchronicities anymore. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yep. But I don't want us to miss our Valentine's days with our wives. So it's a good show. Yep. It was an hour and a half. So I'm like, all right. Yes, sir. And you just did an awesome course about finance and business. And I know with the stock market that just fucking crashed the other day and the inflation numbers, you fucking went out all out and it's fucking cheap. It's like, what? It's like, yeah, well, I did, I did a full career in finance reading for each sign of the Zodiac. And I've never done that throughout my whole career. Normally when I read career in finance, I'll do it as one mm. little section and I'll just stick it in the middle of a love reading and say, right. oh, well, let's see career in finance, boom, 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 for, and I'll talk about it for three minutes and then move on to the love shit. And I went through and I did a whole 25, 30 minute long career in finance reading for each sign of the Zodiac. And it's five bucks for the video. And, and I'm planning to do that hopefully once a month, every month this year. And the only reason I'm doing that is because we know that these times that we're going into are the craziest fucking financial times that right. any of us have seen in recorded human history. So my goal is to, well, I, what I would really like to do is give people a nugget of wisdom that'll help them manifest some success, you know, but yeah. even if, 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 if not, if all else, or how fails, to glide through, like exactly, you were saying, that's yeah. what I was going to say when all, if all else fails, at least help them understand how to glide through it, yeah. you know, and, and hopefully go through it untouched and unfazed, you know? So yeah, that's what I've been up to lately. Well, yeah, make sure that you check it out. It's on richlop.com or terrorwithrich.com. Right? Yeah. And um, of course, go to teamlightstore.com team team, team slash, slash events. events yeah. yeah, and that's where, you know, those tickets are almost gone. We'll be out in Texas. So that's coming up April 7th and 8th. So. It's great. Of course, we'll see you here in the Awakening Experience every week. Much love to you all. Happy Valentine's Day, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Adios.